Hi and welcome to my video talking about leaks from UPVC windows, patio door uh, frames windows and how to fix them um, what appears to be permanently and um, relatively easily compared to taking the window out that is uh, so what sort of problems do you get with um, patio doors, UPVC windows well uh, and this property got a lot of leaks um, down into the room below and also into the walls at the side uh, you see this particular one has been leaking and contaminating the plaster around the side more importantly the water has been going down into the floor below and dripping out onto the floor um, in some of the on some of the patio doors it's actually quite seriously where streams of water have been coming down into the room below um, so what's the problem well let's open the door and have a look get some shoes on <clears throat> one of the problems is the way the sill has been fitted so what happens is surprisingly water can actually get past the seals on the window and go into the frame of the UPVC window or door in this case um, what superficially seems to be quite a good seal when you take the window and actually have a look inside water is uh, getting past this seal going into the frame going out the drains and um, for the door it goes on to this lower panel and then originally the frame had drain holes um, that go straight through and onto the go uh, allow water to go onto the sill if the sill hasn't been fitted properly the water can track sideways and inside the the wall the water will then drop off the end of the sill rather than the water coming out uh, towards the front um, seems um, one would have thought quite a difficult way for the water to travel um, but in reality this uh, is happening on every single uh, patio door on this particular property uh, exactly the same um, with this one as well again water going past the seal running down the window going into the frame uh, normally these sills um, should have end caps on see this one hasn't which only exacerbates the problem because um, it does create a very slight lip on the edge of the sill which stops the water from going sideways uh, it's never going to be a perfect solution and really the edge of the sill should be raised up so it's a bit of a design fault with all the UPVC windows so on this UPVC window I fixed the problem by making these exterior uh, drain holes with tubes on as you can see here so one two three if you look on the other side I've used a polymer sealant quite like silicon but much more uh, sticky and tacky and doesn't peel away from the plastic like silicon would do for this application silicon would be uh, rather use useless so I've sealed over where screws uh, have been screwed down through the frame into the sill so there's one point where water can travel straight through the sill into the water below um, so make sure you seal up around the screw hole the original drain holes which uh, were in here and over here which allowed water to drain down vertically through the frame onto the sill which were part of the problem of being sealed over with the polymer sealant um, then I've drilled through the frame through onto the outside um, does mean you can actually see the drain holes on the outside instead of having a completely flush finish but that's small sacrifice compared to sealing up the uh, problem with water going into the room below is a, is a small sacrifice to make uh, I then found some um, plastic tubing sort of um, stuff you get from uh, I don't know an aquarium shop or your DIY stall find a tube that matches your drill size or drill sizes that matches your tube drill a hole through the frame get a scalpel cut a little 90 degree nick 45 degree one way like that turn it over 45 degree the other way makes a little 90 degree cut in the end that then feeds through sits like that so the bottom of the tube is then sitting flush with your, um, your drain channel 
any water then coming past the seal instead of going through the original drain holes then just goes out these exit tubes and uh, you then solve your water leak so um, that's where I've done it on that door what we'll now go over is um, doing it on the window pane which is straightforward a little bit time consuming that's not too bad every single uh, UPVC window or design UPVC window can be slightly different depending on how they're uh, sealed uh, you could have external beading or internal beading this is uh, this has internal plastic beading but to remove these you've got to take out the rubber seals first so I'll just show how to do that so find a position to start try and get hold of the rubber and start pulling it out of the window without breaking the window I nearly did there it's coming out there we go now once we've got the rubber out that then allows the glass to move further towards the outside of the frame which allows the inner plastic beading some room to move and allows us to remove the internal beading so a couple more to go mm, it requires quite a lot of force to push onto the rubber in order to get a good hold so you don't slip off once you've got a hold very easily pull it out more to go sometimes easier at the end sometimes in the middle try this one at the end there we go now let's go back indoors again right now let's change the camera a little bit see I can now move the glass the internal beading is now moving a bit more this beading should now be able to be pushed back and away from the plastic let's just change that camera position and get another screwdriver so hopefully that's coming out okay right we push the beading towards the outside and also pull it away from the edge and you'll be able to see how this beading is held in place here we go screwdriver down here and we should be able to gradually work our way along once we've started to get it off and then peel it off and that's one side off that in position and start working on the other side and give the window a little push just find a good place to start and once we can get away from the edge get the second screwdriver in behind start pulling it away whoops start again It's going to take a little while doing this, but not having any leaks is the reward at the end of the day for what's probably going to be no more than about half an hour's worth of work. I'll leave the top one to last because that's the one that will hold the window in place, that glass in place and stop it from falling on my head. This one is getting, needs to be a little bit on the tight side, so I'll try it in the middle. Mm. Here we go. Come on. Now, it's difficult sometimes to avoid making little marks in the plastic, but they could probably be pushed out later. And again, there's a small price to pay. For uh, fixing leaks. 
And then the middle seems to move away a little bit easier compared to the edge. And we really need to get to the edge to start pulling the beading out. This corner seems to be particularly problematical. Let's give the window a bit of a push. Make sure it's fully over. Could be a bit of sealant or something stopping it. It's jammed down the corner. Seems to be very tight there. Might have to go to the other corner in a minute. We'll see what actually happens. Oh, no, that's been particularly difficult. All right, let's try the other corner. If it doesn't come out, the other option is to take the top out first, and then we can take the glass out. Then the beading should come out easier after we've uh, removed the glass out of the way. Sometimes you might find, let's say, there's a bit of sealant which is stopping it. No, it's too tough. Let's try the top one. Let's see if that is a little bit easier. Certainly seems to be a bit more space to move on the top one. Certainly in the middle, that's coming out very easily. Let's try this one. There we go. So this corner has come off. Like this here. That will then pull out. Cool, a lot of rubbish in there. Oh, we I'll need a hoover in a minute. Uh, interesting to see what's going on there. That's, that's some insect contamination. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Surprising how insects get in these places. Even with supposedly sealed windows. I don't know what all that stuff is. Yucky. Some sort of horrible insect contamination, I think. It's disgusting, whatever it is. Let's have a look. Mmm, yuck. Alright. Now it's got most of the mess out. Fortunately, there's no live insects in there. That wouldn't be too pleasant. And looks like some sort of spidery insect because there's sort of web stuff there. Right now, should be able to lift the window up if we just wedge it over a bit. There we go. All right, Check the camera. Okay. Now we tilt the window over. Oh, it's tough. I'm gonna muck on my feet. And. Squeeze that away. Should then be able to lift the glass out, hopefully. With some big heavy one. Oh, there we go. Right. Let's just shift this over here for a minute. Lean it against the side. Oh, that was right that way. That really was heavy. Now, let's see if we can just move the spacers and take this spacer out, this beater out rather. Now you can see how poorly this window has been fitted. First of all, the screw hasn't even gone down properly, so it provides a nice little path for uh, the water to go down through that screw hole. That's not even long enough to go into the sill. So that's a complete waste of time. Well, maybe it broke off. Looks like it did break. Uh, we've got another hole, which presumably was for a screw at one time, but the screw's never been put in. So a lovely path of the water to go straight down into the sill. Don't know how far that goes. But uh, from the look of the leaks down below, the water seems to be going to the edge of the sill. And uh, then down into the wall cavity on the outside and insides of the wall despite it all being sealed off around here this wasn't really doing very much uh, so 
what we'll need in a minute is a uh, hoover, hoover out all the rubbish uh, and you can actually see already it hasn't been raining for a little while but you can see it's very wet under here lots of signs of water going through and still water actually in the gap so what we need to do is clean all this off you see here's one of the original drain holes uh, and another one over there so we could use the position of the original drain hole to make our new hole so while it's all messy we'll do some drilling so we want to drill down at about 45 degrees let's get the drill in the right mode Drill mode, there we go. And drill keeps picking up. Okay, that's one. We'll have one in the middle. Right here. that one right and then we need a Stanley knife to just trim off the plastic where we cut it basically removing the burrs like so and on the outside edge do the same as well so a nice clean hole so we'll get the hoover in a minute to hoover up. There we go. Clean those up. Okay. And clean that up. And this one. go on too much with this video because it's going to take a little while to do it all neatly but uh, what I can do is probably clean up one of the holes just with that tissue make sure it's all nice and dry clean up the corners the other thing you can find on UPVC windows is uh, the corners where you can see the plastic has been welded together supposedly form a watertight seal sometimes just due to the stress on the window the weld on the corners can crack and you could get water going down into the frame from the corner so what I do at the same time is put the polymer sealant over the corner part as well to make sure there's no possibility of that so this is the sort of sealant I use, um, look for the words polymer or MS polymer, uh, Wix have started selling it, you can get it on uh, eBay and other places, B&Q, your normal uh, DIY store or online. Uh, it starts off against some very quick, uh, very good stuff called uh, Quicksil from Kent Industries, which introduced me to polymer sealers as being uh, very tacky, very useful general purpose sealers. They actually use them on um, uh, car uh, body uh, sealing, so um, around the seams of car doors. They actually call them uh, seam sealers, and uh, very very useful material because it's extremely tacky. And I'll just show you that. This is on uh, UPVC, and it gets absolutely everywhere. You can see how tacky it is when you touch it does mean that uh, as soon as you get it on somewhere it actually spreads everywhere so you use lots of tissues to wipe it all off so quite simply seal up the original drain hole in this particular case of screw hole was never used 
is a bit shabby. And we then get our tube ah, on which we cut our little 90 degree concave uh, slot earlier. And now we can feed it from the top or bottom. Just make sure that hole is nicely opened up, no birds have reappeared. Try and feed it from the bottom this time, I think. Through the hole. There's a little bit of plastic in the way again, so make sure it's cleared out. Try again. Persistent one. Might have to do it from the top. But what we'll do is push and turn at the same time. With any luck, should be able to get it through. Nearly there. Little twist. Should get it past that last bit of edge. There we go. Right, now look for where the 90 degrees is. See which way up fits best. That fits reasonably well. What you want is the bottom of the drain channel to be flush with the tube so the water has no trouble going down the tube. Then uh, get the Stanley knife. Sometimes easier to take out the blade, mind your fingers though, especially if it's sharp. And lay it parallel with the outside of the window. You want to cut it about 3mm away from the edge. Hold the tube, saw across from side to side. Try and keep it parallel so the tube's just a little bit away from the edge. That'll do. Then what we'll do is push the tube up a fraction. That allows us to get a bit of the polymer sealant just around the end of the tube. So then we'll put the sealant on around. Don't need to be hugely careful at this stage, but try and uh, make sure it touches all around the end of the tube. That'll do. Just put the cap back on, stop it getting everywhere. And now, screwdriver is very useful for this stage. You can start off doing it using your finger job, push it so it's flush again. Try not to block the tube with sealant. Uh, using your finger allows you to feel whether the channel is flush with the tube or not. And to give it a nice spread out as well. Make sure there's no gaps around the tube. And that's quite nice. Get your finger will wipe off. So don't be afraid to use plenty of tissue. And now the screwdriver comes in handy for again checking that it's level with the drainage channel. See there it went down a little bit more. And for pushing the sealant all the way around the edge of the tube to make sure there's a watertight seal which there certainly appears to be here and this size screwdriver actually fits inside of the tube so we can give it a little wiggle around to make sure the hole's nicely opened up and there's no sealant reducing the size of the aperture so here we go, it's a little hole that's just opened up where I sealed in the uh, one of the drainage holes or screw holes so I'll just put a little bit more sealant on that Make sure we don't have any problems. And that's basically how to make sure that the water goes on the outside of the window, then definitely drips down onto the lower part of the sill, because you'll see the sill has an edge just inside there, so water won't be able to go back up, run to the sides. There's no other choice but to run to the edge of the sill and away from the window and away from the wall. And do the same as that on these other two holes. Seal up all the other holes, clean the window. And then putting the window back in again is, is, is uh, oh, pardon me, pretty much the same as uh, the way we took the window out, but in reverse, which we'll do that in a minute. And uh, I'll just pause the video here and we'll come back to that stage uh, in a minute. All right, welcome back. And as you can see, I've done the other two holes, exactly the same as that one I showed you. Nicely sealed off, blush with the channel, so 
so the water that gets past the seal can go down the holes. Uh, while I was at it, a little bit of sealant over so the side screw positions as well, just to cover the vague possibility the water could run down the side and track down the screws into the wall. Uh, probably unlikely, but uh, worth doing since it's all open. Uh, so now we're just faced with the prospect of putting the window back in again. So you'll have spaces in windows. Uh, ideally button back into the same position as you found them. Uh, particularly important on um, swinging door ones. These are just sliding doors, so it doesn't matter too much. But on a, uh, a hinged uh, patio door, um, you want to make sure that if the hinge is on this side, then you have spaces in this corner and spaces at the top left corner that hold the uh, the window tightly and uh, that keeps the whole frame uh, square and the glass actually then supports the frame stops it drooping down on the opening side doesn't apply on this one but um, that just applies to opening doors uh, so here we'll just put spaces evenly on both sides uh, I think, uh, do you see how much water is in this uh, in this door that can't pass the seals because these spaces are all covered in water uh, I'll put them evenly both sides for the moment I think they actually came out with two on one side but we can uh, check the alignment once we put it in and I think that'll do it so now all we've got to do so all we've got to do because it's pretty heavy but what we should attempt to do is try and get the glass back in Move some of this stuff out of the way, there's a bit of space. And what we've got to do is get it on the spacer and probably get ready with the uh, top piece of plastic beading, uh, which I've now lost but it must be around somewhere. That's the bottom one, that's the side one, and there's the top one. And while we're at that, give that a little bit of a clean. See how much has been getting past the seal. Well, how much muck is actually inside the window? That and all of that uh, insect debris that was in there as well. It's amazing how insects can get past tiny little gaps in windows. So they love hiding away inside window frames for some reason. I guess you get both water and warmth. So it's a nice little hiding place for the winter or something. And as I was saying before, this polymer sealant does get absolutely everywhere. You get a little bit on yourself and all of a sudden you found it spread everywhere. So, I'll get ready with that as the top beading. Now, grab hold of the window. Oh, let's just give that top a little hoover. Lots of insects and nasties on there. Off. Little spider, little hibernation homes here. They do seem to like it in windows. Put the other end. Good enough. Right. Use my trusty, trusty Dyson to do that. And get a firm hold on the window, shuttle across, right. space is in position, slightly tilted I suggest, so we need to make sure that the glass rests, or both parts of the glass rest on the spacer, so lift up, put the bottom in first, then at the top. Pushing over as necessary. And before we go too far, just need to make sure that space is going to go in. Let's just try and lever this up a little bit. Be very careful moving the glass. Right. Try and tilt the glass up. Spacer in. 
There we go. Let's just try and get the edges in first. It'd be easier to take the green out and the blue in. There we go. And then we can tilt up some more to get the green in. Okay. That's that spacer in. Blue spacer is in position, I believe. So now we'll put the top beading in. Stop the window from falling out. So here, make sure that the piece of tape from the window is out of the way. Got to make sure that this piece of plastic goes in the slot at the top, so you have to tilt the beading down slightly and then give it a good push so it goes in like so, that should hold the window in place then just make sure we get these spaces in properly again give it a little tilt making sure that the plastic is touching both the outer pane and the inner pane of glass which that would appear to be doing and we also need to make sure that's going to be the case once the outer rubber beading is in place so I'll give it a very slight tilt or twist to make sure that keeps supporting both panes of glass and then let's just prise this up a little Make sure the blue is across piece, both pieces of glass. Let's just see if we can feel that. Yep, that's across there. And that should be there. So keep that in place. Now we need to put the bottom beading in. So again on this one, this piece of plastic that sticks out got to go in the slot at the bottom so we have to tilt it over slightly and get that in it's quite a tight fit this one so tilting over slightly it's just to start from the middle push that in place yeah I guess that's why it was difficult to remove in the first place In. Now, if it's going to be stubborn, use a little bit of a hammer, but use the other end of it. But what you don't want to do is break the glass, but if you're very, very careful, you can do it now and again. And even in confined spaces, as long as you're very accurate with the hammer to hit the glass, you can tap that down. Right, let's wipe a bit of this sealant off the window, so like I said, it does get everywhere. There we go. Yeah, finish off the rest of it later. Alright, let's see then. Is the window central? Look for the overlap of the window over the frame, it's not quite central, so we'll just push that over. Let's go down to the bottom. You don't want to push the glass directly with any screwdriver. You might crack it. That's yes, as far as it's going over. And all it could do with a bit more padding to push over. I think that's about the closest we're going to get. So now, put the other beading back in. So again, tilt it. Tilt it this way, if anything. So this piece of plastic goes in the slot at the back. Uh, seems to go in easier at the middle. Push it towards the window. And often it'll give a little click to go in. So, and you can find spaces. Hammer is also useful. Like so. And the other beading. Exactly the same for this one, tilt over slightly, 
push in at the middle. There we go. So that's that in. Now we've got to do um, the external rubber beading. So we'll put it outside. It's getting dark, but hopefully we'll be able to see what we're doing here. Now then, let's clean off the piece of rubber. You can see they're very wet where the water's been getting through the seal. Clean off the window. Now we should hopefully be able to push the glass over a bit, like so, in order to get our rubber seal in. Uh, look at which way the rubber seal goes around. So the rubber's going to be tilting up towards the glass. Uh, this is the ceiling edge and the outside edge, so you can see it tilts up that way. So it must go that way around. Push it well into the corner, push it down, then do the other corner because the rubber can shrink and stretch. What you don't really want is gaps in the corner. And then simply push it down into position. Like so. The thumbs are good enough for this job. Make sure it's flush with the edge. Run your finger across it, be able to see where it uh, isn't flush. Okay, top and bottom. Bottom's done, top is next. So top and bottom first is what I was gonna say. Look for which way around it goes again. In the window, push over. And do the corner, oops, wrong way around. Do the corner first. Bring it over to the other corner, push that corner in, and then continue over, do the rest of the window. So at this stage things move fairly quickly, and we nearly finish the job, uh, apart from a little bit of cleaning up. So again, look which way around it goes. The you get it the wrong way around it's pretty obvious because the sealant is sloping in towards the window going that way on it's this on the, the edge of the sealant is going that way instead of course it should surface should run this way so you get a 45 degree uh, inside corner to the top make sure we're not twisted all the way down to the bottom and uh, push it into the corner Make sure you don't have any gaps in the corner. And then again, push it into the frame, which holds the window in place. Now, older style windows may have the beading on the outside, which of course, uh, the plastic beading I'm talking about, which of course are less secure and then the more modern windows, which have the plastic beading on the inside, which means the window can't easily be removed from the outside and hence it's more secure. So although this rubber beading can be removed, it doesn't mean you can remove the glass from the outside. You have to go inside to do that, which is higher security. Right, one more to do. And then the job done, which is just as well because it's getting dark. And let's give this a little bit of a wipe off. Okay, let's get a little bit damp. And check which way around we go. All right, back into the corner. Pull that down to the other corner. And put that in. And push it home. Job done. So, so we can see the drain holes, and on all of the windows and doors I've done this on, this has completely fixed the leaking problem of water leaking down below, 
coming out of the room below, going into walls and leaking onto plaster. Um, the only downside is it just has these little marks on the outside for the drain holes, but it's a small price to pay. Um, and if you have a fitting a UPVC door and window, uh, the alternative to having all these problems, of course, is to um, put a little wall or barrier down the edge of the sill to make sure water doesn't run across the edge and make sure you don't screw down through the sill or if you do put lots of sealant around it which of course is quite difficult to do because you're screwing through the frame of the window and the sill um, but um, it's basically one of the design weaknesses of UPVCs really you expect it to mount the window by screwing into the sill but that instantly then creates a path for the water to track uh, down with the screw so if possible don't screw at all but personally I wouldn't say that makes for a very, very secure window so you're better off doing the option that I've done here uh, forgetting about the drain holes through the window and the frame that are built into the frame and do your own seal off the heads of the screws so the water has no choice but to come on the outside of the window and not through the frame and as I say we had some very serious water leaks in this household with water streaming down the rooms below and doing this is um, the only thing that actually fixed the leak which obviously shows where the water was coming from tried all sorts of other solutions of sealing up or putting a, a cover over this gap which allows the water out but stops the wind blowing water in that didn't make a lot of difference that was on another window um, might have been over here uh, no, maybe the next one over. It's getting dark now, I'm not sure you'll see. Yeah, here I tried putting a, uh, another plastic barrier over the edge between the window and the sill, still leaving a gap underneath for the water to come out. But that didn't make any difference to the leaks, and in the end, the only solution was to put these drain holes on all the way along, and that completely fixed the uh, problem of the water leaking down below. So hopefully that's given uh, some help and guidance for people who want to try and fix their water leaks. Thanks very much for watching.